What's going on guys, Hyper Orange here, and today's video we are doing a complete walk around or tour of the mini bass boat I built. So here it is guys, this is the mini bass boat that I built, and it has been a freaking blast. Not only was the build super fun to use tools with my friends, family, design it how I want, I, I just, it was so much fun, but on top of that, it's been a blast fishing off it. Now, I'm going to throw some footage on the screen right now, what it used to be like. If you guys watch the build video, you can see, like, it wasn't the worst thing, but it's not what I wanted. I wanted to make it really nice with the casting deck and carpet and everything. But, uh, it's been a long time coming, and it's been so much fun. So I'm going to take you guys along the tour to show you exactly what I did in a couple takes. Okay, first things first is we got to talk about the trolling motor. I got so many comments asking me why I put a transom trolling motor on the bow of the boat and why didn't I get a, a pedal steer one or something with iPilot. So to answer that first, I'm in Canada and the prices for these trolling motors are so much more than the states. Like so many of you guys uh, put comments of you guys going to Walmart and getting the same motor for like a couple hundred bucks. I paid like 600 brand new and first of all, the two stroke gas motor is one thing but for a trolling motor i wanted a new motor now if i wanted the pedal drive it was double the price i bought this whole boat for 1500 canadian and i came with the trailer the boat and the motor so at first i uh you know i just wanted to save some money and get this Minn Kota traxxas 55 but the reason i got it that i love it so much is that a normal transom mount just comes up to here and you can't bend it but this can go up and down and extend. So I got an awesome little front trolling motor that I can control and steer when I'm standing for half the price. Now, my goal, oh, I wanna get a power drive uh, or Tavora with iPilot. I want spot lock more than anything. But for now, it has been an absolute blast. The 55 pulls it no problem. And on top of that, I've never had any failures with Minn Kota. It's just been so much fun. So that's to answer the trolling motor question. I'd love a pedal steer, but this is what I got for now. I'll eventually upgrade. It's only a matter of time. Then we'll talk about what I mounted the trolling motor on. I found this company online that makes the easy mount, and it's exactly as advertised. It mounted very easy. You just screw this on, massive heavy duty locks and what I like about this feature depending on the angle of your boat you can adjust it so if it's straight flat curved doesn't really matter it fits nice and then you just put on the trolling motor like you would anything else so the easy mount checks out I'm very happy with the purchase with that I'm gonna quickly talk about the trailer so when I first got it it was this white gray with scratches rust this crap everywhere it was a gross trailer hand painted the whole thing this gloss black and then i upgraded it did this heavy duty winch if you watch my build video you saw that the original winch first of all junk and it was wire metal wire so imagine a bird's nest but for your winch now i know why they switched to nylon it's strong if not stronger for sure stronger this can take like three thousand pounds which is totally overkill but uh, imagine birds nesting, how many pissed off guys were at the boat ramp before they switched. But yeah, I put on a heavy duty winch. Didn't even have this wheel, it was on a stump piece of wood. So we put that in. Uh, it had a small ball on and now I did a two inch hit. So I hacked this off and put a brand new stainless one on it. Really nice, put on brand new heavy duty trailer change. Rewired the whole trailer. And this is important, put a spare tire and a fat one. The original trailer had really skinny tires and it's so sketch going on the highway with stuff like that. It was like bike tires, so we upgraded the tires right away. It didn't even have a light on this side. So we rewired it, put nice new submersible LEDs. Also put ratchet straps on the back to connect to the, the boat cleats that I also added. I put two in the back, two in the front, but that's really convenient. You can see it's dirty because it's been in the water being used as it should be. I also put new rollers on to make it easier. Not a fan of this setup. I wish it was more raised so it just goes on, but you know, what are you going to do? 
I'm still super pleased with this trailer, but it came out looking real nice. So we built this casting deck out of three quarters plywood. Then we painted it the same paint, this marine red, so it'll be extra protective against any water. And of course it's carpeted, so the wood itself is safe. Um, on top of that, you know, it's a little bit extra weight because we did the thicker plywood, but I'm 180 pounds and I wanted this to be solid. I didn't want any flex in the wood from over time or whatever. I wanted it to be solid. Now, it even though it adds a little bit of weight, this six horsepower pushes it no problem. And I'm planning or would like to get a stronger motor. So then it would just be a joke after that. But as far as the casting deck goes, it has been a blast. It is so stable. The boat itself is a semi-V, so it's flat up to here, and then halfway through it starts to become a V. Now, from what guys tell me over a John boat, John boats don't really track the best, especially in shop, and I live by Lake St. Clair, um, so I wanted this boat to handle no problem. And I was a little bit worried of how a 12-foot boat would be standing in the front, but I gotta say, being on this casting deck has been an absolute blast. It's super comfortable, and I'm very, very pleased with it. Next, this is one of my favorite additions that I did and that I did not cheap out on. I got a Leathers Captain's Chair on a brand new swivel, too. It had one of those little uh, plastic ones, and I knew I was going to take this out for long periods of time, so I wanted to have a nice chair to sit on. The only thing that was annoying was, I don't, oh, you won't see, oh, let me move this. Getting in those screws was a pain in the ass, but, you know, we did it, and it's done, and it was worth it, and I'm super pleased with this. One of the number one things you guys also said besides the trolling motor was, where are the rod holders? Now, oh, I bought them. I got these really nice orange ones, and I don't know how I was going to drill them in or anything like that, but uh, as you can see here, there's a little bit of a lip, so I would have to build something there. Anyways, I ended up not doing, or if I was going to put them there and there, ended up not doing it. This is my kayak crate that has all my tackle. So when I go kayaking, that goes in. And what I end up doing now is I just put this right here. Uh, if I'm going uh, with two people, I won't take that, even though I have done it before. It's a little tight, but uh, I don't take that. And we just have the rods here, and I can put the tackle in the storage. Um, but when I'm alone, there's more than enough room. So those are the rod storage. So now I can have six rods right there, no problem. And uh, have my tackle at the same time right in front of the boat. So... That's the only reason why. I, if you guys uh, maybe comment something, a good idea, if I can put them there or... Because I have a bunch. But uh, we'll, we'll see, because I don't want it... Once I put it in, it'll be permanent. Um, so I just didn't bother yet. This works fine for what it is. I ended up... Yeah, you can see these are the same things. Because I was like, I bought all these rod holders. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do with them now? I added to my box. To, so they didn't go to waste yet, but we'll see what I have in mind to uh, do later. Maybe one of you guys will comment something nifty or I'll see something cool. Uh, inspiration online to maybe mimic. But yeah, that's the rod holder update. So, here it is. This is the 6 horsepower Evinrude. It has been a blast. Now, the fastest I've gone is 16 kilometers. And I know what you guys are saying is like, oh, that's so slow. But that's with this being absolute loaded. Full tank of gas. Which is, I'm uh, pretty sure, a 6 gallon or something. Or like 22 liters. All my tackle, all my rods. Absolutely full storage with food, camera equipment, you name it. Two big batteries. The trolling motor. The, the fish finder. Now, if I take a bunch of that off, this thing will absolutely rip. Because I know with small boats, weight is your enemy. But for what it is, I'm used to having my little 45 min coat on my kayak, so this thing flies. It's so nice to have a gas motor to quickly just rip up and then go to your spot. Now, as far as the reliability, this is a 1997, sorry, 1987, and it's been awesome. Never had a problem. Took it to Marine Shop before I took it out on the water. 
to make sure everything was good and it was super clean what i was most worried about is that the carburetor would be dirty and they said it was absolutely mint and i'm like if i use it super hard this season do i clean out at the end and they're like it won't even need that but of course i got new spark plugs and then i flushed the water tube to make sure there wasn't any gunk in that and uh she's good to go she's been absolutely purring a thing that shocked me I've been out long hours on this boat, full throttle, absolutely everything, and it barely uses gas. Now, as much as I do love this, I'm, ne I'm not going to get rid of it because this is my first motor and special, but uh, I would like a new four-stroke Mercury 9.9 just to have that extra punch or maybe even something like a 15, 20, 25 to absolutely fly. I've seen some videos, seen some comments, and it, it'd be funny, but for now and for the money I paid and for what I got, this is the little bad boy, and she does absolutely great. We move on to the back. Have a little bit of storage. This is where I keep in Canada, and I'm pretty sure in most of the states, you have to have this little, like, boater essentials kit with a little bit of rope, flashlight, reflector, floater. This works as a, a baler bucket. So that's where we keep that in here, and this is where I keep my anchor. This is a 10-pound anchor, and uh, it's awesome when I want to have lunch or... Uh, just kind of relax for a second or, uh, you know, I don't use it when I'm fishing. You know, if, you know, if I was going for crappie or panfish and I found a hot area, I could drop that. But uh, the anchor's been nice and then I just tie off to this boat cleat right here. Then I have this little tackle box. This is so I don't always throw lures everywhere what I'm using. I just quickly throw it in here to stay organized and nothing's worse. When you throw your lures on the carpet and it gets snagged or gets mixed up with your line or you don't know where you put it. But yeah, that's that set up. Then we move on to the back. Not the prettiest aesthetically, but this is a UV uh, transom, uh, what's it called? Transducer block. So it'll protect against the sun. So over time from the elements, the heat, the sun, it won't wear off. But I sealed it like you have no idea. I was taking no chances, but it's been reading awesome. And being great then I just ran the cord with these little like sticky connectors did a nice loop right here and followed it the rest of the way of the boat and that goes all the way down to the fish finder which this is a hummingbird helix 5 older one it's also a GPS combo that also is downward imaging and it's been a blast i remember i can't believe what i was thinking when i was planning to build this boat because i had i had this run on uh the same one on the kayak so i bought an extra transducer but all i want to do when i take this take this off run it on the kayak take it off run it on the boat two transducers one fish finder but anyways i remember when i was first building this i'm like oh maybe i'll do it later and as i was building i'm like who am i kidding a fish finder is awesome it's funny, with all the live stuff and all the new stuff, some guys say it's cheating, but man, it it really does help to find certain depths and find certain fish, and it, you know what, it's fun. You know, it's another tool, it's another piece of gear, I like it. So, this is my view. Now, the GoPro, since it's like a fisheye lens, it, it curves stuff a little bit. It's good for the POV. But uh, when I want to show a certain size or how things are, it's a little disoriented, but it's not bad. Now, a lot of guys were saying, why don't I put another seat here? To be honest, 95% of this time I'm fishing this alone. I just want to get out, fish for eight, eight hours, go at my own pace. Now, when my buddy comes, we just brought like a pillow right there and switch between I'm usually on the casting deck controlling the motor. Then I let my buddy have this nice leather captain's chair. So it's been nice because once I put that in, that takes away all this space right here so you know it's so much easier just to just to have it as is now we move on to the storage i am super happy with how much storage this is a dry box i put my wallet keys anything important this is a bit of extra boater safety of course i got a life jacket my bass bump board i got a bilge kit a lot of guys were saying if i should run electronic one but for now i just bought a manual one because this this boat is pretty tight. Not to say, I think it's a bad attitude to go on to say nothing will ever happen, but that's why I have it right there. Another awesome thing to have, guys, towels. From touching pike, uh, certain slimy catfish, you never know, or just fishing cold in water, it's really nice to just dry yourself off. 
or knock on wood if you ever fall in or want to go swimming at least you have some dry towels to dry yourself off another really important tip i take this from kayak to boat made this and i carry it everywhere first i have a first aid because you know you never know this is all my tools so i have big jaw splitters for musky or pike i have smaller ones i have lip clamps i have my scale uh, i have my pliers you never know what you're gonna hook into so and you know last thing you want could you imagine your bass fishing hook into a big pike and it absolutely choked the bait i also have bolt cutters to cut treble hooks or anything like that because you never want the fish to suffer or knock on wood uh die so that's my toolkit, and it's super convenient and super awesome then we move to the front this is where i keep the two batteries now at first i bought a battery cover for this box to keep it watertight not that water gets in here but uh, that's why I built it a little bit extra higher right there as you can see but I never end up using it It's just so much easier to throw the battery in then of course I got my mini Dakota lithium that powers my fish finder and uh, These two batteries they last forever. You cannot kill them. You just you you can't <laughs> They're so freaking awesome. You can go out on 10 hour days. No problem. It still has tons of juice um, But what I like about it versus like a, a heavy-duty lead acid. I had my old one Oh my god, I would never put it in this. It was like 68 pounds. This is 31 and that weighs nothing. So that's the front deck for the batteries and both cords. I left like a three inch, four inch little hole in the front so the wires just run straight down. This is me standing on the front and look how good the view is. If I wanna steer, that's how easy it is, it's right there. When you twist this, it works as my spot lock. It doesn't move this from sliding around. The only annoyance with this setup that I run is when I wanna turn this way, it's stretched out a little, but when I have this all the way up, it's not far at all. Uh, and like I said in the previous video of about the trolling motor, for the price, I can't complain, but don't worry, I'll eventually get a, an awesome spot lock, it's coming. Can see my graph no problem and i didn't plan this but what's nice too when i put the trolling motor up and i'm running the two stroke i can actually see my fish finder perfectly so i can see the speed still that i'm going so i have a speedometer right there too but yeah i i absolutely love this the way i put the two by fours and the beams right here where i'm standing you can stand on the hatch no problem but anywhere else like oh it just feels so solid i'm so happy like sometimes i like to fish more back here you know if i'm doing the coast and the trolling motor slightly going uh i can fish from back here but then sometimes especially in a little bit more like i can get right up and personal and it's it just it feels so natural to stay afloat and uh you don't have to worry about tipping now of course when you go into a higher like white cap type deal this is a little 12 foot 12 foot boat and i'm not ignorant to it but it's not bad for what it is as far as pond hopping and flat water it, it's like a dream like i can get into places where big boats just aren't gonna bother if you have a 20 foot boat you're probably not gonna go on certain creeks and stuff but i can go no problem like another thing while i'm up here as you can see i turn around just grab this boom ready to fish oh i gotta put it back boom right in the rod holder grab a different setup now another thing haven't used it yet i have rod holders for trolling either for musk or whatever i've never trolled in my life but i put it in uh, regardless uh probably not going to troll for musky because casting is where it's at but for catfish or something i have a bunch so i can set it up on that side and this side and then wait for the hits then i have i use the other bump board most of the time but I have this really nice Cabela's bump board that goes all the way to 50 and it fits perfectly and looks nice. So hopefully the fall will get some use for that. But yeah, guys, I I don't want to sound full of myself, but it's so awesome, this boat. Like if you're planning or on the fence or thinking about it or saw a good deal from someone online, honestly, I would recommend it if you can. First of all, if you want to build it with your dad or uh, some family or your friends, you're gonna have so much fun just using tools, building it how exactly you want it. Um, it. It was just so much fun. Then your reward on top of all that, 
is you get to fish out of this. And, you know, not that I want to go there right now, knock on wood, if, uh, you know, you really need to, you can sell it and probably make a profit if you buy a junk boat for a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks or something, and really put some nice work on it. There's a lot of guys that want to get out and fish on something nice like this, but don't have the time. They have the money, but don't have the time to do it. And you never know, right? But uh, I'm, I'm super happy with this. And I love that you guys love it. 65,000 views at the time of recording this. Like, what? That was insane. Like, I, and I'm super happy. It has a thousand likes to like 15 dislikes. So the majority like it. And a lot of comments. You guys have said some hilarious stuff, some funny stuff, some insightful comments. And I, I love it. I love this community and I'm, I'm really happy. But that's why I'm making this video. This is a walk around of my mini bass boat. And I'm really hoping you guys enjoyed and just had a blast with this boat. So this is it. That's the mini bass boat. And I'm super, super happy you guys are loving it. 65,000 views at the time of recording this video. What? Like, that's insane. I'm so happy you guys like it. It was just so much fun to build and fish from. And uh, I'm hoping to inspire more people to do this. It's, you know, you don't need an $80,000 boat now. You're talking to the wrong guy. I want an $80,000 boat or a $100,000 boat. But, you know, that's going to take some time. But for now, I'm super, 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 super happy with this. Like, you can get out the same places they can pretty much get out and fish for the same fish. And uh, it's all about getting out there. And especially when, uh, you know, you're on a budget, you can make it happen, no problem. But yeah, I'm super happy you guys liked the video. Huge views. It had a thousand plus like to like 15 dislikes. So I'll take that any day of the week. So this is the walk around. And super, super stoked and excited that you guys uh, have really enjoyed this boat. Anyways, I'm Hyper Orange. As that car goes by and makes some noise, but I'm Hyper Orange. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next adventure. Cheers. All right, first things first is we gotta talk about the tr <laughs>